If you have ever seen me give a public speech, you always see me start off by saying that it should never be about one person grandstanding here acting like he's more important than everybody else. We need everybody else to speak. We need everybody else's voice if we want to be successful in this movement. And we all have to become leaders and not just depend on other people to be our own leaders and figureheads. And then I usually open it up to a general discussion. But the main problem I've been having is that people on my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram have been hitting me up and saying that, Luke, you know, I really love what you're doing, but I somehow can't get over this fear of public speaking. I feel self-conscious. I feel like people are going to judge me. I feel stupid. I don't feel I have what it takes to actually go out there and speak my mind and speak to a large group of people or even make videos. What do I do? Can you help me? Give me some tips or pointers. So, this video, I'm going to do exactly that and also tell you a personal story of how I got started and my first major talk, which compared to jumping out of an airplane and confronting a mass murderer was one of the most scariest things that I ever did in my life. Now, the fear of public speaking is a very understandable fear. Most people fear that more than death itself, and it really doesn't have to be that way. But the number one thing you have to understand is that everybody, including myself, whether I'm addressing 20 people or a thousand people, that fear and anxiety still is within me. But I've learned different techniques and different ways of dealing with it that hopefully will help you be the truest person of yourself and be able to help you uh, speak out and raise your voice when you feel it's important. Now, what are the most important things that I go through? Let's say, for example, I'm at a big gala event where people paid $10,000 to listen to some elite, uh, prestigious douchebag, just to sit next to him, just to talk to him. Let's say I'm at this event and he's on stage doing a Q&A. I'm sitting there. As a journalist, it's my job to ask questions, so I have to ask a question. I have to raise my hand, stand up in front of everybody, pick up the microphone, and address the hundreds of people in that room. And a lot of times, we ask questions that are very, very powerful and piss off a lot of people in that room. So right before that, there is a huge rush of emotions within me. Sometimes before, what I used to do was just sweat and be extremely nervous, and my hands would shake, my legs would shake, I would close in inside and have problems breathing, and that's a natural thing to go through. I mean, it's, it's a huge anxiety, it's a huge adrenaline rush that you have to go through when you're in those kinds of situations, but one thing I always tell myself when I'm in that position, when I'm in that seat, when, I'm, when I have my hand raised, is like, I take a deep breath and I say, screw it, life is short. I mean, we only have a very limited time in this world, and in the ultimate scheme of things, this really doesn't matter, but at least I'm going to be the truest version of myself. I'm not going to censor myself. I'm not going to silence myself. I'm going to say what's on my mind. I have my questions that I want to know, and I don't care how many people they piss off. It's the truth that ultimately matters to me. It's how I behave. It's what I do and what answer I get that are the most important to me. So I realize, just take advantage of what you have in front of you, because why not? What's stopping you? I mean, you know, I'd rather go out there full force and make a mistake and do my best than have a regret of not doing it later on. And I always, you know, tell myself that, you know, I could either regret not doing anything here or I could just do everything I can to find out the truth from this person and I could bust my ass and I could actually do something worthwhile. And in the ultimate scheme of things, I always go that route because it's ultimately a choice of either sitting there being afraid or ruffling some feathers, but being able to be the truest self of, of, of who you are and not censoring and stopping yourself from being that person. And that, you know, that, that understanding always provokes me to go and be more outward. Now, whenever you're doing a talk or even say you're nervous or you're, you're sweating and your hands are shaking and, and normally what happens because of those nerves is you slowly become very introvert. Your whole body just squeezes together. Your whole body comes together because you're not breathing right. Nervousness affects your breath. It literally takes your breath away. It, it, it literally could, like slows down your breath and you're sitting there, sitting lower and lower. And the one thing I do, especially before addressing a large crowd or even making a video, is I make 
an attempt to get up and to stretch and to move around and to breathe deeply. I always breathe as much as I can and take the biggest breaths possible because then my whole body opens up and that's the whole point of public speaking is about becoming outward and not inward. But that nervousness, us thinking about what people are thinking about us, about what people are going to be judging us, of how people are going to see us, makes us so introvert that, that it, it totally destroys what you're about to do, but gets getting rid of that physically. You could physically get rid of that by moving around, stretching, and breathing. Another thing that I find extremely fascinating, there was a recent scientific study done that when people stand up confidently with their chest up, shoulders up, head held up high for a, 10 or 15 minutes, that these people, even though they are not filled with confidence before, because of that stance, because of making that, that change in your body itself, they naturally became more courageous, more positive, more outgoing because of that courageous stand, because of that positive stance. So that is extremely important. What you do with your body is just as important as what you do with your mind. And if you believe it, and if you, if you have your body acting that way, like you're more outwards, like you're more, uh, like you're less self-conscious, and you have good posture, you could let go of that fear. You could let go of that anxiety. And that is the ultimate goal of, of even before I make a video, I always try to stretch. I always try to move around. I always try to stand up confidently and believe that I'm confident because a lot of times what you believe in is actually what you make happen in this world. In, in this world. So just by breathing right and standing up confidently, you get rid of that internal feeling, that nervousness, that fear. But then you got the mind to deal with. You just you just dealt with the body, how the body naturally, uh, you know, clinged onto itself and came inward because of your nervousness. Now you have to deal with the brain. And one thing I do before making a major talk or addressing a large number of people is simply by concentrating and only thinking about the audience. What message do I want to get out there? What do I want to tell these people? What do I want to show these people? What do I want to leave them with? What do I want them to think about? I think about that only and solely. I don't think about how I look. I don't think about what they're going to think of me. I don't think about who's in the crowd. You think about your message. That is the most important thing you do. The more you think about yourself, the more inward you are again. Get rid of that inwardsness. Become more outward. Outward, you know, Become more outgoing because that is the main thing of public speaking. Becoming just out there for everybody. And, it, and, it's, and it's really in our body and our mind that's really stopping us from doing that. And it's really important just to concentrate on your message and not how you look like because you have to accept yourself. If you're doing public speaking, if you're going out there and making videos or addressing a large crowd, you have to accept yourself for who you are. Like, I'm not a good looking dude. I understand that. But you know what? Ultimately, at the end of schemes, I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a damn. If you think wrong of me because of the way I look and not what I say and not what I do, I don't want to be your friend anyway. I don't even want to know you. I don't even want to care about you. I understand that. In the long you know, scale of things, what really matters is who you are as a person. If you're willing to judge me just on my looks, you're a dumbass and I want nothing to do with you anyway. And if you judge me, I won't even give a damn. So, but I'm accepting of my body. This is what God gave me. This is what I have. So you have to appreciate yourself. You have to love yourself. And you have to be, you know courageous and you have to be confident because if you're not confident, you're not courageous and you're not accepting of yourself, you could see that especially when you're on a stage being viewed by a lot of people and you're evoking body language that is not comfortable and you're making everybody seem nervous. You are unique. You are beautiful. You are one out of seven billion people in this world and you are totally different than all those other seven billion people. That's what makes you beautiful. You have to embrace that. One thing you don't want to ever do is try to be somebody you're not. Because the second you try to be somebody you're not, you come off fake. And to me, that's the ugliest thing you could ever do. You are unique. You are beautiful. You are so different than everybody else. You have to embrace that because that is the only way you could be comfortable on stage. If you're, if you're trying to be somebody you're not, people will see through that. You will make it extremely uncomfortable and extremely crappy talk whenever you do that. So accept yourself. Be a part of your own personality. Get it out there to people. Don't suppress it. Don't try to be somebody else because that is just, just the worst talk you could give. And I could, you could tell. You could tell just by seeing someone's not being authentic. Someone's not being real. And that leads me to another point. 
Don't write down what you're about to say on a big piece of paper and read it off verbatim. That is the worst thing you could possibly ever do. The one thing I always do is I always have a notebook. Whenever I have an idea for a video, I always carry this everywhere I go. And every time I always have this idea in the back of my head, whenever something comes up, I always write it down in my notebook. And a couple days later, maybe a week later, I bring it down and I make you know concrete bullet points just on here. And I look at the bullet points and I address them one by one and I talk from the heart. I don't read anything because when you're just speaking and you're not even just thinking, you're speaking from the heart. That is the truest way you could ever speak. It's authentic. The energy is real. You could see that someone's not making this stuff up. You could see someone's not lying because it's the truest form of speaking. Not even have to thinking about it. Just going straight from the heart is the realest way to speak to people. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I have my notes. I have everything I want to talk to you about, but ultimately it's all coming from up here. Most importantly, before you open your mouth and start blabbering out to everyone, think. I always have this image here that I always use myself personally before giving any, any major talk or before making any video of me just blabbering on into this camera. I always use think as an analogy and I always say, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Always think about those things before you're about to open your mouth because personally, I rather listen to somebody first before opening my mouth. And, and to me, the wisest thing you do is listen and not just talk. Remember that. Remember not just to have an open platform to promote yourself and to blabber on about different horrible things that are happening in this world. Think before you speak because words are extremely powerful. They're a waveform. They're energy that affects a lot of things in this world. So think wisely. S choose your words carefully and make sure what you say is ultimately helpful in the long run. So ultimately, it's all really a mind game. And once you really know the rules, once you know how to play this game, there's nothing stopping you from winning. So why not go out there and win? Why not go out there and do something positive and not to be, not be afraid to be your true self and deny yourself from, from that? Why not? Life is short. Go out there, do it, speak your truth to the world. Truth is subjective. We all have our own individual truths. We all have our own unique individual experiences. But the more we communicate, the more we're open with who we are, and the more we're able to communicate with larger groups of people, the better we are as human beings. Always remember that. Now, personally, one of the most scariest experiences in my life was giving a talk. And it was my first major ever real talk in front of thousands and thousands of people. For the first time ever, a major anti-war organization decided to have two representatives from our movement. This is the time where I was working with New York Not 11 Truth. And they decided to have me and this other guy who was organizing the group actually, for the first time ever, give a talk in front of a large anti-war crowd. Now this is a major opportunity. We were always shunned away from the anti-war movement, but now they were finally accepting of us. They told us we could have 15 minutes. So I was extremely excited. I had, I, you know, made all the mistakes that I told you about before and I wrote down a whole big piece of paper of exactly what I was gonna say. I had everything ready. I show up there, I show up there and there's literally 7,000 people. I looked, I, was, I just went on stage and just rows and rows of just a sea of endless people everywhere and huge speakers set up all along the streets. Now this scared the crap out of me because I never really gave a major talk before or a major speech before. And this is the first time a lot of things are riding on this situation. And uh, the organizers come up to us. They're like, yeah, we told you you had uh, you know, 15 minutes. You got five minutes. Sorry. And I'm like, all right, that sucks. So uh, I decided, you know, my friend came up to me. He was like, all right, who's speaking first? And I was like, you are. I'm deathly afraid. I'm, you know, I was on that stage. My friend goes up there. I'm shaking. I'm sweating. I, I don't know what to do with my body. I'm not breathing. And it was just a huge rush of just introvert, just energy just swallowed me up and just took a hold of me. And I'm supposed to address these people in just a few minutes. Now, as my friend's going up there, he did the same thing and he was reading off cue cards and he was stuttering and he was messing up his words and he wasn't making any sense at all to the point where the crowd was booing him. There was people booing him at an anti-war pep rally. And I'm on there. The organizers come up to me and they're like, yeah, you guys are done. You can't speak anymore. Sorry, you got to get off stage. And 
I was like, what do you mean? I, I, this is a huge, we have to do this. And they're like, no, you got to get off stage. We're behind time. You got to, you can't, you got to get off stage. You can't. I'm like, no, but we have no, you got to get off. I, I was like, let me just stand here. Let me just, all right, just stand here. You can't go up on stage. Don't do that. And I remember just having two decisions, having an easy way out of the situation or saying, fuck it. I'm going to do it anyway, because this is a huge opportunity, a huge chance. Why not go after it? And right when they were telling us to get off stage, right when my friend finished stuttering in front of everybody, I was just like, screw it. And I just went on a stage, I grabbed the mic and I spoke from the heart. My notes got jumbled. I was so stressed out. There's people behind me cursing me out, telling me get the F off stage or else they're gonna drag me off stage. And I looked at them and I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna go with it. And I spoke from the heart and I told everybody about the problems we're facing, about the solutions that are in our hands and what we could do about it. And then how I was starting a youth-based organization in New York City. And I want everybody young here to sign up because the difference will start with us and nobody else and we are the future and the future is decided by the young people and it's what we do that ultimately matters and I remember just just giving off this huge I don't know where it came from I remember not being able to read off any of my notes but the whole crowd just erupted and cheered and that was one of the best feelings in this world and that feeling I hope to share with you I hope you have those because those are once in a lifetime feelings from turning a really negative angry horrible just ball of energy into something incredible, into something positive. It reverberated around all those thousands of people and people were coming up to me all day and signing up their email addresses. I took all those email addresses, emailed everyone and we called the meeting. We didn't have a name and that's where We Are Change started. And if it wasn't for me going up on that stage, a lot of important people wouldn't be able to start We Are Change. It wouldn't have been like it was before. But because I took that risk, because I was willing to fail, because I was willing to be humiliated, just like my friend was, something beautiful and amazing came out of it. Taking that nasty, you know, angry, just scary energy and turning it into utter happiness and pure joy by getting something accomplished and motivating people and getting people inspired. It's the best feeling in this world. And if I could do it, if Chris Matthews, old, stumbling, he can't even make a coherent sentence sometimes. He just throws words out there. If he could do it, you could do it. All right, so if you thought this video was helpful to you, please click the like button. If you have any further tips and recommendations, let me know in the comments below. If you have any other questions that you want me to address, let me know on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I will try to get to everyone, but I also will try to make a video with the most important question. Now, this week we released four videos starting off with how to deal with negative depressing crap here. Uh, we hit the streets of New York City and talked to random people about the war in Syria, and that video really depressed a lot of people, so we decided to go to the protest Thursday and inspire people with the people who were actually protesting the war, and our friend looked closer and made a really good video about the major protest that happened here Saturday. Check out his Vimeo channel, subscribe, there's a lot more coming, and again, thank you so much for watching. And it said that they crossed the line and they actually used the chemical weapons and the people. And the John Kerry, the dude with the small penis that was doing porno films, I seen it. So what I think I could do is tell you how I personally deal with being depressed and un unmotivated and what I personally do. It may be helpful to you, it may be not, but personally, whenever I feel depressed, whenever I feel sad, and I do.